How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you guys through my very own team selection for the upcoming Game Week 4. So the Game Week 4 deadline is fastly approaching. As you guys are watching this video, it's going to be tomorrow. It's a reminder about the Friday deadline, but unfortunately, no deadline stream this Game Week. Now I'll be going over my team review for Game Week 3, don't worry. I'll be going over it quite quickly in the transfer plan video that released on Monday. I did go in a lot more depth. Then after that quick team review of Game Week 3, I'll be taking a look at Game Week 4, the transfer plan, the team selection, as we look to use both of our two free transfers. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So a very good start to the 2023-24 season got even better with a nice little green arrow to the 130k mark after scoring yet again 56 points. So the Game Week ranks are looking pretty decent, and as I said, the start has been pretty good this season. So let's hope that we can actually build on this and get a massive finish by Game Week 38. In the comments down below, let me know how your Game Week 3 went. Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? And where are you guys sitting in the overall ranks? Now in terms of our transfer plan for the upcoming Game Week 4, two free transfers and just less than 2.0 million left in the bank. So we can make quite a big upgrade. Now I just want to give a quick shout out to all you new Legend members and new YouTube members in general. Just a reminder you that when I do my transfers, I won't be posting them on Twitter anymore. I'll be disclosing when I do my moves to the YouTube Legend members over on my Discord server and on YouTube. But don't worry, the moves I'm going to talk about are going to be in this video. They're going to be in the deadline streams when you do them. I just won't say when I'm actually going to confirm them. But if you guys don't want to post your teams in the YouTube comments, you can always join my Discord server, free channels, a bunch of them, where you guys can ask me any questions about your actual FPL team. But let's go on to my team. I'm going to do kind of a quick review, go over position by position and show you where those 56 points came. So let's start off on our bench and Turner actually managed to get a save point this game week, scoring a total of three points. Now, if you guys watched the ultimate guard yesterday, Nottingham Forest actually have a pretty decent defense this season and Turner's also racking up a few save points. So very kind of happy with my 4.0 of choice. However, Ariola might be the better pick as he's doing pretty decently for West Ham. We then have Baldock who actually featured against Man City, only the one point appearance, which was expected as they are facing the best team in the Prem. Then in terms of Bayer was actually not even in the squad for Burnley in game week three, just keep your guys' eyes on that if you have to play him. And then finally, Archer's got his move. This wasn't confirmed by Game Week 3, but by Game Week 4, he's in the Sheffield United colors, and therefore is in line to actually feature in Game Week 4. So nothing much from the bench, and unfortunately that extends to our goalkeeper of choice, Johnston. Turner actually outperformed him. Johnston only racked up two points. Now, he was actually featuring against Brentford, which is a pretty tough opponent, as their attacking department's pretty decent this season. It's a little bit unhappy that he didn't rack up more save points, as I would have loved that. But we have bigger concerns with Johnson between the sticks. Then going to the defensive department, Ben Showell yet again carrying our defense, six points, just the clean sheet, and no attacking returns annoyingly, unlike Gusto. So yes, I would have loved some attacking threat, but I mean a clean sheet, that's what we want from our defenders anyways, so I'll take these six points. Then in terms of Saliba and Estupanan, both options ended up blanking. The Saliba one was a little bit more annoying, ended up blanking to Fulham conceding two goals, which you never like to see. Now, I guess the more annoying fact is that you Gabriel owners, if you had Gusto or an Adogi on the bench, would have got those points off the bench, which would have been absolutely massive. So all the points that Saliba had over Gabriel have been completely wiped out, and I'm actually looking to bench him next game week. Then terms of Stupanan, finally the blank came. I mean, these attacking returns were too hard to sustain, and Brighton's defense is actually pretty bad this season. So a ton of XG conceded, not a lot of minor clean sheets are going to be on the cards. And that's exactly what happened against West Ham on the weekend. But I guess he was still getting those chances, still getting forward loads, but it's almost like we're having to rely on attacking returns from him. Then let's move on to our midfoot apartment. We're going to start off with the middleman in Bumo. Ended up blanking against our goalkeeper Johnston. So only the two-point appearance. But because he's so super cheap, I don't mind him blanking every odd game week. Now the fixtures still look good for Brentford in the upcoming game weeks, so still happy to hold on to him, as I think he's a great FPL asset. Then extending one out, we're going to go over our Arsenal double-up of Saka and Martelli. We spoke about Martelli in Lent in the Ultimate Guard yesterday, Unfortunately, hasn't been returning those FPL points, and therefore he's on the chopping block for a transfer out. Saka's kind of redeemed himself though, got a penalty, actually took the penalty, converted it super well, so I do believe that he's going to be on them in the future. So I was happy with Saka, not too much with Martelli, but he still had some good attacking threat. But luckily we kept hold of our two United assets, Rashford and Bruno, both ended up returning, Bruno obviously with more, 12 points versus 7. Just happy that I hold on to these two assets because the Nottingham Forest game was too hard to ignore, and both of them ended up returning. Now the stats are still looking pretty decent from a United point of view, even from an individual point of view, and you would have seen that in Ultimate Guide yesterday. 
So midfield apartment overall was pretty good, in Bruno Martelli slightly disappointing, but the Brentford man is a lot cheaper. Then finally our forward apartment, Erling Haaland ended up missing a penalty but scoring a goal, so he ended up on 4 points double to 8. Now I do believe that Erling Haaland should still be on penalties, at least hopefully, it was a kind of very unlucky miss, the goalkeeper even went the opposite way, he just ended up hitting the post. But still a great asset at the end of the day, easier fixture though, would have loved some more points, but everyone captained him so the gains are kind of marginal. Luckily though, our Ollie Watkins or Jackson move paid off right away in game week 3, 5 points compared to 7. So Jackson finally got off the mark this Premier League season, looks like a great asset, might not be the best FPL asset at the end of the day, but the Chelsea fixtures are too hard to ignore. So will Jackson outperform Ollie Watkins in the future game weeks? I do believe so, as the fixtures definitely look better. So the forward apartment, can't really complain too much, as I said, just happy that the Ollie Watkins move didn't come back to bite me too much, but let's see in the upcoming game weeks. So the starting 11 ended up with 56 points and that was a green arrow to 130k. As mentioned in the comments down below, how did your game week go and where are you in the overall ranks? But now let's turn our attention to the upcoming game week 4. As always, I love to give you guys the context of my starting 11 and my bench before I talk about my transfer plan. So I'll be going over each player by player, discussing if I'm going to transfer them out, if I'm going to keep them and how confident I am in them getting some FPL returns. So let's go over our bench to start off with, luckily the bench is looking a lot better this week than last week, that's mainly because Sheffield United host Everton. So Archer, the transfer has been confirmed, will he start in game week 4, I don't really exactly know. If he does though, it's a great fix on paper. Then Baldock, even though he's had some kind of transfer rumours, seems like he'll be staying at Sheffield United at least hopefully, and if he does have to come off the bench one of our defenders, I'm pretty confident. Other than that though, we have Turner against Chelsea way, Owen Jackson, probably not going to play him, and then Bayer Spurs at home, but he might still be injured. So as mentioned, if Archer actually starts this one, could be a great asset, and if Baldock has to come off the bench, that might not be the worst. Our starting goalkeeper is going to be Johnston, or at least I hope it will. If you guys don't know, Dean Henderson has just signed for Crystal Palace, pending the announcement, and I really just hope that he's the number one for the game week. The reason for that is obviously that Wolves at home game is super outstanding, Nunes has just signed for Man City as well, so he could actually have featured in this game, so let's hope that move does affect Wolves' attacking threat. But as mentioned, big concerns here because I mean Dean Henderson hasn't signed for 20 mil for no reason. I just hope Johnston gets the next few game weeks. Then our defensive department, gonna start off with the number one option, Ben Showell against Nottingham Forest at home. Great fix on Papier, might not be as good as the Luton one, but I still feel like Showell can do pretty well. Now the big thing to watch out for is that Chelsea do feature tonight in the League Cup. I do think Showell will be rested though, but just keep your guys' eyes on that one. Now do I think that they'll keep a clean sheet? I don't exactly know. If you guys have seen Nottingham Forest have been attacking pretty decently, and overall, I don't exactly trust that Chelsea defence as of yet. But still, loads of attacking threat can be had in this fixture, so I do think that we should get some returns. Now the next option, Saliba against United at home. Tough fixture on Papier, owner Bruno, owner Rashford. I'm almost hoping that they score, and therefore Saliba is on the way out. Now that could be for a chance out, that could be for a benching option, and are there any of you that are actually starting Baldock over Saliba? That's something that was running through my head, think that Everton's a much better game than United at home, and of course I do own most of their attackers. So let's see what happens at the end of the day, but I'm pretty sure that I'll make a defensive transfer, and therefore Saliba will be moved to the bench. Then we have a stupid on against Newcastle at home, now if I thought they were going to concede against West Ham, they're definitely going to concede against Newcastle, and that's almost hard to actually play the Brighton defender. But I guess he does offer loads of attacking threat, takes one assist, one goal to actually do pretty well, but how long can we kind of rely on these attacking returns? But maybe Brighton will surprise us, finally keeping a clean sheet, I don't expect it though, and therefore if you guys do want to bench a stupid on, I can understand it. So for the defense isn't looking too great, I think Chilwell and Johnston definitely have the best fixtures, Saliba might be benched for our own team in this game week, and I'm not super confident in a Stupinan's defensive threat. Now the midfield apartment doesn't get much better, but at least Mbumo does have a very nice fixture, Bournemouth at home, I'm expecting a return at least from this fixture, as Brentford's attack is pretty decent. Now Mbumo's ownership is still pretty low, so a nice differential for our teams. Then let's go over our double ups, gonna start off with the Arsenal one, Saka and Martelli, a home fixture against United, and if you've just seen the news, Varane is gonna be missing from injury. So could I see Arsenal scoring here? Definitely, I think that United defence isn't great at the moment, let's hope that Saka and Martelli, if we do keep them, are involved. Now that Arsenal attack hasn't actually been that great, if we saw in the ultimate guide, not even in the top 6, even though the fixtures have been pretty decent. So as mentioned, Martelli definitely one that could be transferred out, and I'll be going over some options I could bring in. Then the reverse fixture is going to be Bruno and Rashford, it's Arsenal away. Now Arsenal's defence as well hasn't been that great, conceding 2 to Fulham, that was a little bit unexpected, so United with their good attacking stats could definitely score in this one. So let's hope that Bruno or Rashford are involved if they do score, and historically this game has had goals in it. So I guess the midfield apartment and our overall team really depends on this Arsenal vs United game, 
What's your prediction for this fixture? Drop it in the comments down below, but I'll probably say it's going to be a 2-2 draw. That'll be absolutely massive if Rashford, Saka, Martelli and Bruno all get attacking returns. And as mentioned, our rank is probably going to rely on that. But let's move on to our four department and things get a little bit rosier. We've got Erling Haaland against Fulham at home. The best Campsy option this week. Great fixture on paper, great play on paper. I'm expecting at least a few returns. But you guys know what the story is. Everyone's going to captain Erling Haaland. The gains are going to be super minimal, which is a little bit annoying. That's why I've always said I would love to get kind of an Alvarez or get a Foden in my team so that you guys can actually be happy about some Man City returns. And the final option is going to be Jackson, our newly transferred in or at least from Game Week 3. Great fixture on paper like Ben Chowell. Let's hope if we don't bring in Raheem Sterling, he outperforms him. So no complaints in terms of him. This is the reason I kind of brought him in. The Chelsea fixtures are simply too hard to ignore and I wanted a slice of that attack. So overall, the starting 11 doesn't look too bad, but heavily reliant on that Arsenal vs United game and honestly can't predict which way it's going to go. But with two free transfers and 1.9 million left in the bank, let's see what upgrades we can potentially make. What I want you guys to do is comment down below what moves you guys predict I'm going to do or what moves you think I should do. Maybe you're going to suggest the move I haven't even considered. You guys can also comment what moves you guys are doing for your own team. And if you need any help, I'm here to do that. Now, before we talk about the transfer plan, I just want to give you guys a full disclosure. I'm recording this before the Wednesday night fixtures in the Carabao Cup. So just keep that in mind when I do talk about my transfers. The reason I'm saying that is that Chelsea do feature tonight. We had Spurs yesterday, Udogi, Madison, all those good players were rested. But who says that Pochettino will do the same? Now, while I do think that Sterling, Chowell, and someone like Augusto will probably be rested, just keep your guys' eyes on that one tonight. Then we also have some other competitions like the qualifiers. I think Aston Villa will be playing in that game, but they are leading 5-0 on aggregate, so a player like an Oli Watkins will probably be rested. I just want to give you guys a reminder about these midweek fixtures. Please just pay attention if one of your players does get injured, so let's hope not. Now the transfer plan for this week is going to be an extension of the video I created on Monday. I've nailed down my transfers to kind of two or three options and I'll be running through them in this video. So the first option is pretty kind of confirmed or nailed. I'm just waiting for Dogi to potentially rise in price yet again and then my hand will probably be forced to make this move. Now the good thing about Dogi is that he was on the bench last night, picked up a knock on the weekend, went off as a substitute. But because he was on the bench last night, I don't think he's recovered from it. Now because I have so much money in the bank, the transfer out will actually be for Bayer, the current moment still kind of orange flagged or yellow flagged, and I do actually prefer Baldock from Sheffield United. But there have been some transfer concerns about Baldock, so if he does get that move, then obviously he'll be transferred out. And the reason I'm going for Odogi over someone like Augusto is I do really like his attacking threat and the fixtures. From a defensive point of view, I like these next fixtures compared to Chelsea's. So as mentioned, this transfer is pretty confirmed, as long as in the press conference on Thursday or Friday, if we do kind of extend it to then, if the manager doesn't say anything bad about Odogi, he'll be in my team. But if you guys do want to go for Augusto, 100% get why. Great asset at the end of the day. And if you aren't going to go for Raheem Sterling as a triple up, he's definitely worth a shout. So go on to the next move. Now, I don't necessarily have to make this move, but it's Martinelli out. The reason I'm saying I don't have to make it is they do have Everton next game week. And between United and Spurs, both these sides aren't defending that well at the moment. Now, my only concerns, as I mentioned, the ultimate guard yesterday is I do think it's a kind of expected minutes concern. And there are other replacements that are performing better than him. So the two options I've currently got are between Madison and Raheem Sterling. We went through a very in-depth comparison between the stats, the fixtures, all that good stuff in the video I created yesterday. So in that video, I did mention that I currently am preferring Madison. And at the current moment, I am kind of leaning towards that way. But Raheem Sterling's rising in price as I'm recording this video. And that might be quite tempting. Now what I'll do is I'll try and extend this move to the press conferences coming up on Thursday and Friday. I just want to give as much information as possible. Madison was injured potentially after game week two. So I just want confirmation that he's absolutely fine. So while I don't have to do this move, I could actually keep Martelli. I mean, United is a great fixture, could play right into his hands. I do prefer the fixtures and the play style of Madison and Raheem Sterling. So it's very kind of a 50-50 between those, but I think currently I'm leaning kind of 60 to 40 towards Madison. But you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, if you want some backing as to why I'm preferring Madison, his stats look slightly better. I do believe he's more of a talisman. And over the medium term, I do actually like his fixtures. But if you want some more insight, go watch my ultimate guide yesterday. Went over that in quite a lot of depth. And if you have any questions about that or any insights that you gained, comment them down below. Now, the one play I haven't really mentioned yet is going to be Phil Foden, but with the news that Nunes has just signed for Man City, as well as Doku, I don't exactly know how that lineup's going to be. So that's why I'm going for the kind of expected minutes, the certainty of Raheem Sterling or Madison. And as mentioned, I'm currently favoring the Spurs man. But as mentioned, another option could definitely be Raheem Sterling. If you guys aren't going to go for Gusto as your triple up, I think Raheem Sterling is a perfectly fine option. The more explosive option, but I think the more short term one. But don't be surprised if I post my final team and Raheem Sterling is sitting in that midfoot apartment. 
I'm going to do some more number crunching, some more planning after I release this video, and I'll be posting my final team coming up on Friday. But as mentioned in the comments down below, let me know who you guys prefer between Sterling and Madison. Are you guys bringing one of those options in? Are you guys going for a full Foden? What other moves are you guys making and what other moves do you suggest that I do? So to kind of conclude our team selection, I'll be going over if I make those two transfers, how the squad will look. So I'm going to take out three of the changes. So Saliba, Martinelli, and then I'll also have Bayer off the bench. Saliba will drop to the bench and the new transfers are Dogi and Madison. So both two Spurs assets will be in my starting 11. So the starting 11 definitely looks a lot better here. Still very reliant on that United vs Arsenal fixture. But let's hope another North London team does pretty well against Burnley. So this will be how the team sets up if I make two free transfers. And if I do go for Raheem Sterling instead of Madison, obviously just sub him in. But this is basically going to wrap up the video guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I will see you guys for a potential final team video coming up on Friday. But I'm going to sign off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.